everybody, it's Ms. Hamill, and I'm here to talk to you today about large molecules and the structure and function of the large biomolecules, which are macromolecules. So you must know all of these things in order to do well with this section and on the test. Um, the role of dehydration synthesis in the formation of organic compounds and hydrolysis in the digestion of these compounds. And you need to recognize the four macromolecules and their structural formulas, the cellular functions of these compounds, and their levels of the proteins, and um, how they reach their final shape, and finally, how the denaturing impacts um, the protein structure because of heat and pH. Okay, so before we begin, let's talk about how molecules form, how these biomolecules form. So first, we have our small little sections or small subunits called monomers. So think of it as a single Lego. And the single Lego is going to connect with other Legos to form a long unit or building blocks basically. So the small unit is called a monomer, the single unit is a monomer, and it is used to create a polymer or the long chain. And it connects with a reaction called a condensation reaction or dehydration synthesis. So the polymers are going to be long lengths of monomers or the single units and usually they are identical or similar blocks linked together by these covalent bonds. Then many polymers or at least two are bound together and they create giant molecules called macromolecules. So these are small units, our monomers, all the way up to our large units, which are the macromolecules. So an example for our protein would be an amino acid, and amino acids bound together make poly, or a peptide, and then peptides bound together make polypeptides, and then polypeptides bound together make a protein. And they're bound together using condensation reaction or dehydration synthesis. So making of macromolecules, how do we make them? Well, again, dehydration synthesis. So we take two monomers, we line them up together, and we have a hydrogen from one monitor, and it binds to the OH of another group to form water. So H plus OH equals water, or yields to water, and these form our large molecules. Hydrolysis is going to be the breaking apart of our large molecules, so it breaks apart the water molecule, and then from the water molecule, an OH group adds to one part, and then the ad H atom on the other. So we have, oops, H2O makes a hydrogen molecule and a OH molecule. So here we go, dehydration synthesis is going to be a condensation reaction. It makes polymer, so we take a monomer and we make a polymer. So A plus B equals AB. And you can see here we have two small units make one larger unit plus water. And then hydrolysis is going to break down polymers. So we have our polymer to a monomer. So we have AB yields to A plus B. So here we have our large molecule plus water makes two smaller subunits. So here's just another example. We have a short polymer and oh, here's another monomer here. They come together so that OH on this monomer links up with the H on this polymer and if we have two H's and an O that makes water and the water is removed and these are bound together to make one long polymer. Dehydration synthesis is going to be, I'm sorry, is going to be this here. So this is dehydration synthesis and then breaking down the polymer, so we have one long chain, we do this through hydrolysis. So it's going to add or take a water molecule, put it in to our chain, so in between our molecules, and then we'll have the H on one of our molecules and the OH on the other. Okay, so carbohydrates are going to be the first um, group of macromolecules that we're going to talk about, 
and their function is fuel and building material. So these include simple sugars such as fructose and glucose, and then polymers which are the link together, and this would be our starch. So the ratio of one carbon to two hydrogen to one oxygen, oxygen or CH2O. So a monosaccharide is going to be a single sugar, disaccharide is two, and polysaccharide is many linked together. So our monosaccharides will be our monomers. They include glucose and ribose. Ribose will be important in our DNA. And then our polysaccharides are used for storage in plants, it's starch, and animals, it's called glycogen. And then also structure. So in plants, this is called cellulose. And in arthropods, it's called chitin. So the cellulose and chitin provide structure and support to these organisms. And they're going to differ in position and orientation and the glycidic linkage. So the average American eats 140 pounds of sugar a year. So that's a lot of carbohydrate intake. And um, too much can be a bad thing, but just enough is good for energy. Okay, so here's the structure and the classification of some monosaccharides. You can see here, trioses are going to be three carbon sugar, so one, two, three carbons. And then, whoops, here we have pentosis, this is a five carbon sugar, one, two, three, four, and five. And then we have our hexoses, which are six carbon sugar, C6H12O6. This here is our glucose and our fructose. All right, so there could be linear forms or ringed forms. So here is our linear form, and then the lines can fold and form rings, okay? So this is linear and ring forms of glucose, which is C6H12O6. So through dehydration synthesis, um, we can take glucose and form maltose. So we have two glucose molecules here, and we combine the OH on one side to the H on the other. We release water, and then we link the two together, and we have maltose. And here, here's a dehydration synthesis reaction to make sucrose, which is table sugar. So we have glucose and fructose, the OH on the glucose binds with the H of the fructose, it releases the water molecule, and then the two molecules are bound together by the O, and what do we have? Sucrose, which is table sugar. So there's two forms of glucose, as I said, um, and they are either the ring structure or the, um, the straight structure, and the alpha and the beta structures are dependent on where the OH is located. So you can see on the alpha glucose, the OH is on the bottom, and on the beta glucose, the OH is on the top. And this is important for the binding of the molecules. So starch, which is a beta, Oops, I'm sorry, starch, which is an alpha, this little fish symbol here means alpha, or it looks like an A, and the glucose monitor is the monomer. So starch is going to have this type of glucose, so the OH is at the bottom, and they will bind together using the dehydration synthesis to form this long starchy chain. And then here, um, cellulose is formed with beta glucose monomer, so the OH is at the top, and it forms our cellulose. So you can see the difference here, OH, OH at the top, and then here is all at the bottom. Okay, so the difference in um, the different starches and glycogen, um, which are the polymers of carbohydrates um, and the function of them. So here the 
Starch is stored in the chloroplast, and this is due to photosynthesis. So the purpose of photosynthesis is to convert the solar energy um, into in the water and carbon um, carbon dioxide into sugar. So this happens in the chloroplast, and then our animal glycogen or animal polysaccharide is called glycogen. And the purpose of these polysaccharides is to store um, energy. And then here, structural polysaccharides are cellulose again and chitin, which is the exoskeleton of um, invertebrates, so certain invertebrates or arthropods. Okay, the next one is lipids. And lipids are going to be our fats and oils and steroids and phospholipids. So fats are going to store energy, and they're going to be a glycerol bound with three fatty acids. We have saturated, unsaturated, and polyunsaturated. These words should be familiar to you from reading nutritional labels on your food. We have steroids. Two examples would be cholesterol and hormones. And then the phospholipids, which are important in our cell membrane. So they form the um, lipid bilayer in our cell membrane. And they have a hydrophilic head, which would be liking of water, and our hydrophobic tails. So our hydrophobic tails must be the lipids if they are hydrophobic. So here is an example. We have our glycerol, and through dehydration synthesis, it attaches to our fatty acid, and we have our long chain. So there are three dehydration synthesis reactions in a fat molecule. All right, so difference between saturated, unsaturated, and polyunsaturated. Saturated fats are going to be saturated with hydrogen. This is animals, and they're solid at room temperature. An example would be butter. Unsaturated are going to have some carbon to carbon double bonds, and the double bonding causes a kink in the molecule or in the, the chain. And these are found in plants. They are liquid at room temperature, and an example would be corn oil, olive oil, canola oil. So liquid at room temperature versus solid at room temperature. So this here is a cholesterol molecule, which is a steroid. And here we have our phospholipid, which we have hydrophilic head. Here is our hydrophilic head. There's a phosphate and a glycerol and our fatty acid. So our tails are what are our lipids. Okay, so it's our glycerol and fatty acids which make up a lipid. And the hydrophilic and hydrophobic interactions make our phospholipid bilayer. So in our shell water, um, if we stick our phospholipid bilayer, the heads are going to be hydrophilic. So they like water. They will allow water to pass through. Our tails are hydrophobic. They are going to be pointing inwards towards the cell. So the bilayer is going to have two layers of the phospholipids, and they'll be pointing towards each other. So the tails would be pointing to each other. And then externally, we have the hydrophilic heads and internally to our cell we have our hydrophilic heads because outside the cell and inside the cell contain water. Okay, our nucleic acids, let's see if I can get through this, probably not. Um, our nucleic acids are going to store hereditary information, so our DNA and RNA. Our DNA is going to be a double-stranded helix. They have nitrogen bases which are A, T, C and G, so this contains thymine. Um, they store heredity. They are longer and larger than the RNA, and their sugar is deoxyribose. RNA is going to be single-stranded. The nitrogen bases are A, G, C, and U, which is uracil. They carry the um, information from the DNA to the ribosomes. There are tRNA, rRNA, mRNA, and RNAi and the sugar is ribose. So sit tight, we're gonna end here. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about nucleic acids and proteins in the next lecture, okay? Done.